This actually starts out kind of funny. Eagle's Nest, or McConkie's, one of the most prized lines at Palisades Tahoe, had gone in a week from almost bone dry to looking absolutely phenomenal. Fluted, glowing, it was just something that needed to be skied, and I want to be the person that skied it. So I was hiking up there on this particular day, and right when my foot hit the top, my phone rang. And this other guy, Garrett, and I were just laughing at the timing of it all. But I picked it up thinking it could be my brother, Rob. And I've actually been skiing the nest before. I've been on the face of it a couple turns in when my phone rang. And for some reason, I answered it. And it was my brother. And he was like, oh, you're on the nest? I'm driving into the valley right now. Can you hang tight there? And I'm going to get in a spot where I can watch. Anyway, sure enough, it was Rob. And he had been watching me hiking on Find My Phone, which we call Stock My Brother app. We talked through the line a little bit about the conditions. He wished me luck, and then I waited for a little sliver of light. Here we go. I looked over at Shane's Eagle one last time, like, we got this, bro. And then I dropped in. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Immediately, I realized that the snow was not the same as it was over the rest of the mountain. Oh, she's deep. Where there was this dense layer that was really supportive. Very deep. The snow is really deep, but I was also hitting rocks. So I slowly worked down a little lower. Now usually from here I do a big side hop or a turn that loses some vert for me to be on this ledge that kind of goes across the nest and usually holds more snow. From there you can sneak in a couple of turns before airing out the exit cliff. So from here, hop to there, and then cut across. But as I looked down there, I saw a few rocks kind of poking out through the runnels. And I thought maybe I should go higher. And that might have been not the wisest decision at the time. My plan was to allow a little speed to stay out of the runnels and bounce off a couple of the flutes. Then I'd shut it down in a patch of snow that I knew was farther over as I'd been studying it for a week. But that patch wasn't really there because I was taking a higher line. In reality, it was more like down here. So I let my skis run for a moment, clipping rock, airing over more rock. But here, I thought I had a new deep spine below that had formed on this pad since I'd last studied the webcam shot. By landing sideways, I could shut it all down. The problem is, I'm not in the air here above the deep spine. I'm in the air here above a rock that I'm about to uncover. This shot was from the day after, after I had uncovered it. Rewind it and you'll see the rock promptly remove my ski. It probably also did this to my arm, but I'm not 100% sure when that happened. You can hear the rocks better from the side angle. At that point, there was no stopping and in blind chaos, I went hurtling over the exit cliff. I was hoping to feel the sensation of free falling to the powder below, but I wasn't so lucky. Slow it down from the side and you can see my body launch into a front flip from up high. 15 to 20 feet below, I strike a prow of rock with a force I've never felt. My body gets ejected into a second front flip. I actually threw a dub off the nest. I'm blown away by the force of the impact, but my immediate concern is to avoid the trees below, but I have zero control. All I can do is fight to keep my head from getting buried by the slough. My immediate assessment is basic. I'm alive, my head's fine, I know I don't have a spinal injury, so I yell out, I'm okay! But I know I'm not truly okay. My arm hurts a little bit, my back is on fire, and I'm really struggling to inhale. And so I know I'm in a bad state. And meanwhile, my brother Rob is on Stock My Brother app, and he watches it take me down the mountain a ways, and then it recalibrates and puts me back in the trees and I'm not moving. So that concerns him and my phone rings. I can't move this arm. So I can barely reach down my pocket. I, I pull out the phone, I'm talking to him for a little bit. I, I tell him that things are, are not great. You know, I'm trying to reassure him as much as possible, but things aren't ideal and that I don't feel like talking right now. And I 
put the phone away. So he's left in that state. So I'm there for a few minutes all alone. Uh, then a few friends show up and one of my skis is totally inaccessible up on the face of McConkie's and I have no way down essentially. But a patroller shows up with this rental ski, a little carving ski with some demo bindings on it. So uh, he helps me click into that and we work our way down the mountain. Um, I'm skiing down, it's, it's absolutely agonizing, but I wanna get down as quickly as possible and that's the best way to do it. So we headed on down, down to the clinic. And that was the end of my season. Possible new on thorax. I, that was my first thought. I was wondering about that up there too. Yeah. Thanks fellas. Thanks, Are you guys got me? Safe travels. You'll be back. Ended up spending a couple of nights in the hospital with a fractured scapula on this side, a collapsed lung right here, this technicolor arm that I still don't know what it came from. And I've got a plastic doohiggy right here hanging down from a tube that's going into my chest to help drain the lungs. But you know, in, in looking at it all, as is often the case with these types of things, it could have been worse. So for that, I'm thankful.